Hi, this is Eileen Epps Hamilton with In the Word Ministries, and I'd like to welcome you to this special edition of Word Bites. Um, with the advent of everything that is happening with the coronavirus and its impact on our community and our lives, we felt that we would do this special edition, um, this special video, to talk about the God of all comfort. Um, it was our hope that what we share with you today will add comfort and help you as we go through this very difficult time. What do you do in the middle of a pandemic virus and economic meltdown? I mean, how do you maintain your sanity? How do you walk out your faith? Um, is it even possible to comfort your friends and family who have been managing from payday to payday and wondering how they will make ends meet. How do you respond to people when they say that this is a hoax and you ask them the proverbial question, who is the them? Um, what happens when your long awaited spring break turns into a 15 day quarantine? The coronavirus has changed the face of 21st century living and life as we know it, and its mark will leave an indelible mark until the 22nd century. How we react to crisis and change simultaneously is truly a test. How can we respond to both crisis and change will also reveal our faith under fire. We too must understand that these are difficult times and times um, that we have been called, especially called to, such a time as this. I'm sure that um, when you hear the word new normal, um, it causes you to, to stop and think what we're really asking people to do. Um, that's what we're calling it, new normal. The reality is that it doesn't feel normal. Social distancing and drive-by testing is by no means normal, um, nor is searching for toilet paper or making your own home sanitizer. But it's the reality we now must face and will continue to face until it ends, until it ends. Um, I truly believe that you and I were born for such a time as this. I mean, we were born um, and we were created. Our purpose from the foundation of the earth was to be able to navigate through this time and to support each other um, through um, our uh, beliefs and through our uh, commitment to Jesus. It is the God of all comfort who has called us to this time and this place so that we would be able to help people move forward. As I was searching for a scripture to support um, this teaching today, um, I was led to 2 Corinthians, um, the first chapter. Paul, in this letter to the church at Corinth, is sharing with them the expectation that they are to comfort each other with the same comfort that they had received as they went through the challenges of being one of the early churches that faced persecution and that faced um, even um, their lives being put in jeopardy, even sequestering themselves in order to um, walk out their faith um, and to live the way that they were now being asked to. It reads in the third verse, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. So Paul is acknowledging who God is, that God is the model. God is the creator of mercies and consolations. He is the originator. It is his nature, um, and he is giving blessings and thanking um, for his love and for his mercies. It says, who counsels us in all afflictions so that we can console those who are in any affliction with the same consolation 
with which we ourselves were consoled by God. So we were consoled by God. We are supposed to console those who have faced the similar afflictions so that they can experience the same love and the same concern of God. And that's what we are being asked to do. Um, I know it's easy to focus on our needs, but what even in the midst of that, um, we are to consider those outside ourselves. And Paul exclaims that he was so desperate um, and so um, despondent behind all this that it said that he despaired of life himself. But he said, finally, in verse 10, he who rescued us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us. On him we set our hope that he will rescue us again. He will rescue us. The, um, the New Testament uh, King James Version reads, who delivered us from death is delivering us and he will yet deliver us. And God will deliver us yet from what we're going through currently. What I'd like to share with you is a list of some things that I hope uh, will help you as you become the voice and the arms and the heart of God to comfort those as we go through this. And in the process, you will also be comforted. Um, these things you can do. The first is we invite each of you to re-engage in our Facebook um, community group. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, you will see that there's a group um, icon that you can click on. Please do that. It's an opportunity for us to come together and share our successes, our fears, our concerns, our questions. It's an opportunity to operate in community. Um, even in a time of isolation, we need intimacy and connection and relationship and community. So I'm inviting all of you to go online and just click on and write down your comments. It says our tests will be our testimony. Share your testimony. As we go through number two this time, um, let's maintain our relationships in new ways. Let's put social media um, to work. And let's use it the way that God created all technology in order to support um, each other and to communicate the Word of God. And I use an acrostic to share with this new um, model of what social media could be. S, supportive, that we support each other. Um, no matter where we are, we can pick up the phone, we can call each other, we can check on each other. Outreach, if there is an excellent time for outreach, is now. What better thing to share with people than Jesus, but to outreach and to show them the love of God. Compassion and consideration. See um, that we will be compassionate and that we would look at the needs of others than just the needs of ourselves. I is inspiring. Um, I think of the mothers who are with their children, seven by 24. Um, we need to inspire them and encourage them and let them know that they're doing the most um, honorable job there is, is raising children um, and bringing them under the admonition of the Lord. Attune. Let's be tuned in to what people are going through. Um, listen to what they're saying and what they're not saying during this particular time. And then L, loving, expressing the love of God. Use social media, um, use conference calls, FaceTime. Um, I had a friend, um, we were supposed to have coffee, and she wanted to cancel the coffee because of the virus. And, and I thought, hey, let's do virtual coffee. We can FaceTime and drink coffee, and I can support her, and she can support me. Do the same thing with lunches. Sack lunch, everyone bring your lunch to the phone, and then we are still connecting. So important that we maintain relationships during this time. Using your messaging function, um, also message each other. Scripture, um, words of encouragement, those are so many things that we can do with that social media. Also during this time, um, part of the social media and the relationships, it's an excellent opportunity within your own household to reconnect with your significant other, 
your husband, your wife, your children. Um, no need to rush out to the different practices and different commitments and meetings. Um, while we are in this position of, of frequently being um, sequestered, it's an excellent opportunity to get, each, get to know each other again. Unhook and practice um, self-care. Um, someone shared with me today that during this time of mandatory and voluntary quarantine, people just don't know what to do with themselves. Um, this generation who has been in a constant state of motion, all of a sudden are being asked to come to a screeching halt. This is a major change. This new normal is driving people crazy. Um, use this as an opportunity from a self-care to take a nap, sleep late, listen to music, especially praise music. Praise music is the quickest way to bring yourself into the presence of the Lord. Um, five, stay informed, but turn off the television um, or your podcast or whatever you're looking for, your media, um, in the uh, morning and after the morning and evening news. Begin your day instead with prayer and time with Jesus. Let him know what your concerns are. Um, practice Emmanuel journaling. Uh, we'll have a link to um, share with you what Emmanuel journaling is. But know that God uh, sees you. He hears you. He understands what you're going through. He knows it's hard, but he's glad to be with you. He doesn't turn away or run from you when you bring your problems or your concerns. He already knows them. And better yet, Jesus can do something about them. Six, uh, now I know this is going to sound really nuts, but um, at the beginning and the end of the day, practice gratitude. List at least one thing that you're grateful for. You know, I'm grateful that God is still in control. God is still in control. I'm grateful that I live in a country that has the resources to attack this problem, this virus, and to see through the economic upheaval that we're going through. I appreciate the fact that I have toilet paper and food. I appreciate the fact that um, because of the quarantine, I get to sleep late and I get to read books that I never had time to read far before because I was out and about. And, you know, I get a chance to exercise. So express gratitude. Um, that brings joy to him. And all things give thanks. Um, seven, practice prayer intercession. Um, pray for someone other than yourself and your own immediate family. I know there are many scriptures around prayers for others. We're supposed to pray that God's kingdom will come. We're supposed to pray for our leaders. We're even to pray for those who mistreat us. But I'm asking that you would expand your list to include um, our seniors, that be me, and our children and others who are in the high risk category who are in need of, of coverage. Pray for our public officials and our leaders. Pray for our spiritual leaders and our church. Pray for health care workers, both inside and outside the public health um, system. Pray for caregivers who are taking care of parents and children and grandchildren. Pray for them, Lord, for coverage and protection and rest. Pray for people who are dependent upon the health care systems, those who are going through chemo treatment, those who are going through dialysis. Pray for those who are incarcerated. Pray for those who are in prisons, who don't have an option, the, the, the forgotten. Pray for the homeless. Pray for those who have already experienced loss as a result of storms. Pray for businesses and their employees. Finally, maintain a routine. Though you're confined at home, don't let that stop you from having a routine to your day. Number one, read your word. Number two, read your word. Number three, read your word. 
add a daily devotional process of rhythm to your life. Spend time, make time for you to be with Jesus. Hold that time in space where you can read his word, you can meditate on his word, you can hear him as he speaks to you and directs you. But he will also be the God of all comfort. He will comfort your fears and your concerns. You can share those concerns with him. And he will pour out his heart to you as you pour out your heart to him. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. Get up, take a shower, outline what you want to accomplish that day. Um, how can you be of service? What can you do? What can you read? Matter of fact, why don't you read Word Bites um, on our website? I think we have 247 of them. And then after you finish that, then you can listen to our Morning Reflections uh, podcast. Uh, another pause for the cause. Um, have virtual coffee and virtual lunch with friends. Schedule that online. Outline that business or that book that you always wanted to start. Because after the storm is over, what will you have to show for the time that you spent? Did you spend it in worry and fear? Or did you spend it in discovering who God really is, interceding and being God of all comfort to those who come into your sphere of influence. You know, God has promised in the midst of these storms to faithfully care for us. We can trust in him, bottom line. Uh, we can trust in him. That's where we get our comfort. I'm going to share these closing scriptures. You may grab a pen and use them to meditate on during this time. Psalm 91, 14, 16 says, Because he loves me, and this is God who is speaking, Because he loves me, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He acknowledges my name means he calls on him as his, his God. He calls upon me, and I will answer him. He is the God who hears. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. Knowing God can be trusted and is faithful, we can respond in these dismal times with a different voice to the world. Psalm 121 states, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God is the maker of heaven and earth. This doesn't, didn't take him by surprise. He will not let our foot slip. He who watches over us never sleeps. He doesn't sleep. And this is my favorite, Psalm 27, 13 through 14. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We will see the goodness of the Lord even in the midst of this. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Today's news will soon be behind us. Tomorrow there will be something different to grab our attention um, happening in the world, happening as a nation, as a family, as individuals. The one thing that remains constant is that God is still in control. He's never been out of control. It just seems out of control to us. It is in Him that we can put our trust. He is the God of all comfort. The Lord has established His throne in heaven and His kingdom rules overall, even the virus, even the economy, even our fear, he still is the God of all comfort and he is in control. That's it for today. Reminder, um, please check out our Facebook friends group. And also um, in April, we will be doing a new online training on spiritual resiliency called Bounce. How appropriate for it today. Um, but we thank you. We appreciate the time that you shared with us and your support of Word Bites. 
We'll be praying for you. You pray for us. We thank you and just have a great day. Bye-bye.